India, you can see here its location in the world and a little bit more closely, uh, the uh, close-up map of, of the country. Uh, Samson lives and works about where that red star is in the city of Hyderabad in the state of Telangana. And Ibrahim Patnam is to the southeast of there, about halfway down to the coast in the state of Andhra Pradesh. In that map, they're all one state, but they've been divided into two since that map was made. And I have not been able to find a good recent map of the new state that was made. But anyway, Samson and his family and the church there are doing well. He thanks God uh, that uh, brethren across uh, the world are praying for them. Uh, Christina is a pharmacist and she is able with her experience and knowledge and connections to be able to at least give advice, if not actual physical help, to uh, other people, members of the church locally, to other preachers with whom they work um, around a very broad area. <clears throat> and uh, many preachers and preachers' families do uh, depend upon him, upon them, uh, for a lot of encouragement in spiritual matters and in uh, physical daily responsibilities as well. Samson in his home with uh, his wife and sometimes their daughters join them, those who live uh, closely enough. Um, they have uh, their own Bible study uh, and uh, devotional time at home morning and evening. And he says over the past month or more, and this would be a couple of months now by now, uh, they have increased their concern and their prayers for evangelism and churches of Christ all over the world. And uh, he says, I pray that your blessings uh, will be uh, and wishes will be fulfilled in my life by His grace and mercy. He, he, uh, he is a, a dedicated man. Uh, this, uh, this page here uh, tells you why I love this man so dearly. He says, though I'm disappointed a few times, God is lifting me up to stand to fight the good fight of faith. What else do I need in my life except to give all the glory to Him till the end of my life? I wish to be a practical example to my brethren in India for the coming generations too. He's that kind of a man. I've worked with him since I think 2000, I don't remember, um, 2010 perhaps. And um, we have traveled many miles uh, and visited in many homes and many churches, uh, preached in many streets, and even on one occasion shared a bed in a hotel uh, when uh, con uh, accommodations were tight. Uh, we, are, uh, we are kindred spirits, and uh, he, is a, he is a man is uh, working hard for the Lord. He uh, says, thank you for encouraging the brethren at Lincoln to provide a dollar help each month for the work. We wish to mention in our monthly reports, this was in an email that he sent to me, we wish to mention in our monthly reports so that it might be an encouragement to others. Convey your gratitude to the brethren for their generosity. This is why I felt it necessary for me to make this report to you. He really uh, sincerely thanks you for what you've done. You may think it's little, but it's a lot. It really helps. He did put that in his report, which goes to churches in Australia, churches in Great Britain, churches in the U.S., and I don't know where all else. And he put in that report, we thank the brethren at Lincoln, Davison, that's in Michigan, Northeast, that's in Australia, uh, Brother Adrian and others for their generous support contributed to India evangelism. May our God continue to bless them abundantly for the praise of His glory. Samson works with several particular, uh, several specific churches and various other works as well. And I don't think I can give you an accurate and full report of that in the time that's available, but I'm going to try to give just a little bit. His recent report, uh, he usually goes down through the specific areas and shows uh, what's going on and the various uh, uh, responsibilities that he has. The Scenic Hill Church is kind of the central home uh, uh, for his work. And I'll show you in just the next slide why it's called Scenic Hill, or at least some of why. Um, he says there are about 15 to 20 members worshiping in our campus each Lord's Day. As you can see in one of those pictures, the attendance before COVID was about 200 to 250. Um, they have really suffered. Uh, the people are mostly worshiping at home, as we mentioned in a moment. Um, this picture I want to show you, the top picture that you're looking at here is their central meeting hall. Uh, when that picture was made, 
there was a dirt floor there. They covered it over with uh, green AstroTurf type carpeting. There was no roof over that building. This was the dedication of that new building and I had the privilege of preaching the first uh, sermon and teaching the first uh, Bible lesson in that building. And the sun was bearing down so hot with a, no roof on there that the people had to sit around the edges and toward the back. Both of these pictures were made on that same occasion. And so I had this great big empty hall in front of me while I was teaching people who were way back yonder. But uh, it, was a, it was a joyous occasion for everybody concerned. The building sits up on a hill, and I don't have a picture of the building. I wish I had, but I didn't, wanna, didn't have time and opportunity to put everything in here. But this is a view from the building. And just to give you an idea, that winding road right in front with the flower pots along the side, that's the, that's the last part of the road that comes right up to uh, where we are. And then that dirt trail that goes on back until it disappears out of sight, that's the road from the main highway. Well, one of the major highways in the state goes right by here, and, and, and Hyderabad would be to the right of this picture. And so it's a couple of miles out of town, and uh, that dirt road... Uh, sometimes is almost impassable. I walked back to that crossroads of dirt roads there and took a picture of the building from, from back there. And then uh, there are two buildings at the top of that hill. One is a dormitory for students and the other is the church building and, and school building. Uh, but uh, it was named Scenic Hill by one of the Americans who helped build it uh, many years ago and I think it's, it's very well named. One of the other churches that Samson works with is called the Blue Park Church. That church meets in his home. Uh, he is not the uh, preacher there. I think one of his uh, sons-in-law uh, typically handles that responsibility, and then some others uh, work with him from time to time. But all uh, of those people who are in that church, and there are, if, if I'm not mistaken, about 15 or 20-ish uh, that meet uh, in that uh, location on a regular basis, but all of them have been worshiping in their homes since the COVID restrictions uh, came along. And then the Hyderabad Church, I've never been there so far as I can recall, but all of those members also are worshiping in their homes since the lockdown. And uh, all of them have sent their prayers uh, and uh, their concerns for brethren around the world, and especially those who are uh, uh, sharing in the work that they do. So the Hyderabad Church also is sending um, sending their thanks and their prayers uh, to you. The Pleasanton Church is uh, one of uh, more recent uh, uh, establishment, and I have never been there as well, so far as I know. Sometimes he hauls me around and says, okay, here's where we stop. you got to preach right here. Uh, in the early years of our traveling together, we would be coming back from being out, way out in the country someplace, and we'd be headed. I thought the day was over, and it was dark outside, and I was sitting in the back seat of the car about half asleep, just really wiped out from the heat and from the uh, all-day preaching. I preach three to five times a day when I'm over there, every single day of the week. And uh, we'd be driving, driving back into town, and the car would pull up to a stop, and he says, okay, you're preaching here in 10 minutes. <laughs> so that's just the way he works. It's the kind of, uh, kind of uh, opportunities that we have over there. I have, I have preached in assemblies that started as late as 11 o'clock at night, and it's not unusual at all to start after 9 p.m. Uh, but, um, yeah, we preached one time. We started at 11 o'clock, and then we had supper at midnight afterwards, so... That's, uh, that's the kind of work that we do. But anyway, I don't know that I've been to Pleasanton, but I may have. But again, here, they are all worshiping in their homes as well. So we come to IBA, International Bible Academy. That's the uh, school not only for preacher training, primarily for preacher training, but others enroll as well as, as space is available in the school. Um, they typically would have 52 students for a two-year program and then start again with 52 new students. Much reduced since uh, the, uh, well, since 2017 or eight, since 2018, Sam Samson lost most of his support at the end of 2017 and has been uh, very uh, diligently trying to replace that and he's not even close yet to, to what, he, uh, what he had before. And uh, because, uh, because of that, the uh, enrollment in the school has been cut back. The last time I was there, I think there were 12 students in school. 
Uh, right now, uh, they just have two that are able to meet, and that's because they don't have homes to go to, so they're staying in the dormitory. The government has not yet permitted them to open their doors and for educational institutions to meet. Schools are not in session anywhere in India, at least schools that are under the control of uh, any kind of government uh, regulation, and this one is. I guess most of them, I don't know of one that wouldn't be. Um, it's not a government school, but they do require a lot of specific records to be kept and forms to be filed and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, for those students that were there, uh, the staff decided that they just uh, pick up on some past subjects and do some renewing, and so they studied Indian constitution and law, customs and cultures, languages and interpretations, uh, a number of languages. Practically every state in the nation has its own language. There are two, two or three times where two states share a language, but uh, there are a lot of different languages in India. I've forgotten the exact number right now. And then they studied from the Bible the books of poetry, Christian evidences, denominational doctrines, uh, covered also in the past month. They have uh, a, a couple of, uh, he says, two, two students have remained on campus as well as a caretaker is also staying there. So he's doing, they're doing what teaching they can with what people are available. There's a picture of the staff and the committee members. There's a, a board of uh, directors that oversees the work of the school and it is, uh, it is a mighty work. I think there are three full-time teachers uh, on the staff and then others who, uh, who teach from time to time. A couple of those men I know very well and uh, a couple of them have translated for me and others uh, we have worked together in different areas. The school provides uh, uh, literature, particularly Bibles, where they can for preachers, even graduates and others. Uh, and this is a picture of uh, some 50 New Testaments uh, in the Telugu language that they had uh, distributed to preachers. India School of Preaching is a satellite program for preachers and uh, preaching students um, who are not able to attend in Hyderabad. They meet twice a week in uh, some uh, facility near their own home. And uh, at the end of a, uh, a one-year program, then they come to IBA campus for two weeks and uh, have their examinations there and they're sent out. They have sent out over 400 preachers just from that satellite program. They operate in three locations uh, and have many opportunities to expand that to other locations if they just had the financial support to do so for providing a, a hall and, um, and teachers. Indiana Bible, uh, India Bible Correspondence School is the work that we have focused on here with regard to the uh, dollar challenge. And I want to talk to you about that for just a little bit. Again, uh, this is from his report. He says, The brethren at Lincoln Church of Christ kindly accepted our dollar challenge and sent $200 to the IBCS work, Internet, India Bible Correspondence School. Uh, that's $200. That was the second time. Uh, the month before that, we had sent $63, so we've sent a total already of uh, $263 on two occasions. But we haven't sent anything for October, so it's time to do that again if we're going to. He says, soon after the funds are available to us, we send them to West Virginia. And I don't have an electronic transfer connection with him. I do in, in Abraham Putnam. Uh, when we send support down there, I just send it by PayPal. It gets there just fine. Um, but with regard to uh, Samson, we send it to their sponsoring church in Ripley, West Virginia, and they mail it on, uh, I guess, by regular mail. So he gets it in a check. So it takes some time to get it to us. I'll get it to them. Soon after the funds are available to us, we will place an order to print for junior and adult courses in Telugu in limited quantities so that the work will continue. Thanks to each of the brethren for their love and generous charity. That thanks is directed to you. Here is an inventory of supplies. Oh, this, let me back up here before I show that. These pictures, that was the room as I saw it in uh, 2010 when I was over there. The, the top picture shows uh, courses available ready to be mailed out. These are, these are printed lessons ready to be mailed out. The uh, cubicles that you can see have desks uh, there where people would grade the lessons and stuff the envelopes and send them out again. The bottom shelf shows record books from all, they have records of every student who has ever enrolled in this program. What progress he made, what was the result, and all of it, it's all, it's all in there. They have done a great deal of work as you can see on this slide. The current inventory, you can see the need. They have no junior lessons and no adult lessons in print available to mail out. 
They had 1,330 English lessons, some New Testaments in English, some New Testaments in Telugu. From the beginning in 1989, over 474,000 people have completed the junior course, over 386,000 the adult course, and in the English course, over 229,000 have completed that. So they are doing a lot of correspondence work. And of course, many, many, many of those people have obeyed the gospel. Very often, uh, uh, preachers, teachers will go out to these people uh, as they have completed the course and continue to study with them further and baptize them into Christ. And many times uh, those students will come to the preachers for that purpose. They have distributed Bibles both in English and in Telugu, New Testaments both in English and Telugu. They have a book called Understanding New Testament Christianity by Charles Scott that uh, they have uh, distributed. This is just the past month uh, that they've done and again limited funds uh, to, uh, to distribute some of these things. Samson writes, I'm grateful to God and each one of the brethren in the Lincoln congregation for pouring out their love for me. Please convey our thanks to each one of them for their contribution. It is a great blessing to the work of India evangelism, especially to the Bible correspondence courses. We will print the Telugu lessons after we receive the help. We can restart sending the lessons in Telugu for juniors and adults. It's like reviving the correspondence course work again which was started March 31st, 1989. So uh, they had, when I was there, um, when it was working full-time, they had, I think, three full-time workers who would come in, uh, family members, and come in, volunteer their time uh, to grade, uh, uh, grade lessons and send them out. This is just a, a, a description of the dollar challenge, and I won't read this entire page, but I put it up there because once again he mentions, he says, we thank the brethren at Lincoln, Illinois, for their generous response. Um, you might think you're just doing a little bit, as he mentions here, the price of a cup of coffee or an ice cream cone once a month, but it really makes a big difference. Uh, the last time I was there, and it doesn't fluctuate much. It may have with recent economic situations in the world. The last time I was there, for one dollar you could get 62 rupees, which is a dollar. So one equals 62. So if you send a dollar over there, what you can buy for a dollar, they got 62 to work with. So it really, uh, it really adds up, and, and it's really helpful. Indian brethren are very benevolent-minded. They are very conscious of the need to care for the poor, and there are many, many poor in India. They give to widows, and most of the churches that I have worked with have uh, programs to care for widows and orphans directly uh, in, their own, uh, in their own care, in their own vicinity. And here is a supply of bread and fruit, apples and bananas, and other things to be uh, distributed to the poor, and they bag those up and they carry those out and uh, distribute to them. The work that Samson is involved with, Samson has helped to establish and to oversee the work in several homes for widows and orphans. And they're always, of course, in need of help. He says regarding the children, you know, the scripture says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old he'll not depart from it. And he says that's the most important blessing we have, is to ground them at a very early age. And regarding the widows as well, in James chapter 1, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. This they take very seriously. Everywhere I go over there, they are very concerned for caring for the widows and orphans. And in this picture here, they're giving them uh, new clothing. You have seen that wraparound garment that Indian women wear. It just comes as a, it's a single strip of fabric and they just wind it around them until it looks something like a dress. <laughs> That's, uh, that's the way they do. They, uh, in one community, <clears throat> IBA provides funds to present, that's called a sari, that garment that they wear, S-A-R-E-E, -E, and they present that to poor widows on the, the first day of January every year, and IBA helps to contribute to that. The children's homes and, and widows' homes are uh, the Roe Children's Home in Draksharama, our Children's House of God in Rajamundri, Church of Christ Children and Widows Home in Sagipadu. I love that name, uh, but that's what it's called. I have visited all three of those locations. I knew the place in Sagipadu before there was a building there, and, and when the church was just meeting in a, in a, a, a thatched roof uh, with uh, no sidewalls. Like I said, one back sidewall. 
but that uh, they have built up there and have a good work going there. And they also operate a leper's home in Rayavaram. Um, <clears throat> I want to tell you this one. Samson is very concerned for this particular woman dressed in blue here. Sister Parishudama uh, lost her hands after she was converted some years ago. She was a Hindu and she converted to Christ and her husband opposed her conversion and persecuted her mercilessly until she was driven to attempt suicide and she grabbed the hold of some electric wires trying to kill herself and all she did was burn her hands beyond usability and they had to be amputated and uh, she has uh, lived for many years now as a faithful Christian uh, the preacher behind her is the man who taught her and baptized her and the woman beside her is a neighbor lady who cares for her and uh, those three children are, are neighbor children. I don't know whether they belong to that woman or not, but she's just that kind of a, a caregiving woman. The Northeast Church of Christ in Adelaide, Australia is a church of only six members, but they support the lepers home in Rayavaram. They help some of the children in Rajamundri and they help to provide a preacher for India School of Preaching and uh, doing some of this benevolent work here, including providing uh, this tricycle. It's an interesting kind of thing. Maybe you can see real close to the man's left hand over at the, over at the edge of, far right edge of the picture. There's a little handle there. There's one on the other side, and he operates that thing by hand as he uh, pedals his way down uh, through the streets. Uh, good example for those people. To give you another idea of the extension of Samson's work, uh, back in, uh, he, uh, in August of this year, uh, he uh, taught a, a class on Zoom with Indians in Dubai. There are a large number of Telugu-speaking Indians in Dubai, and Samson has for years wanted to uh, build an extension of International Bible Academy there in Dubai, and has asked my help, and uh, I feel woefully inadequate to get too far into that, but we have talked about it and worked about it and worked at it for a long time. But he still teaches this way and travels over there when he can. Hasn't been able to this year, of course. About his eye surgery, he says he underwent eye surgery on September the 20th. Laser surgery was successful. Again, it was cataract surgery. He told the doctor there about the help that we had given to pay for that surgery, and the doctor himself sent his thanks to us for that. He said that surgery was very successful, and he's planning on now starting with the left eye as soon as time and money are available. And when the doctor gives him okay to use his eyes to do so, he's going to finish the printing of my book, Introduction to Old Testament Books. He has finished the translation of it, but hasn't yet got it printed <clears throat> because of the typesetting, setting up, and all of that. And now the printer is uh, limited in the work that he's able to do. He sent a, a, a financial accounting of uh, his eye surgery. Uh, he had available $4,290 with the help of several, including us, uh, for that eye surgery. And uh, it only cost $3,270, and that left him $1,020. And so uh, he has uh, $3,270 for the left eye then, uh, so he still needs $2,250 to, uh, to finish that uh, second eye surgery. Samson has two brothers, both of whom are gospel preachers. The, uh, uh, Samson is the oldest of three. Uh, his middle brother is Abraham Lincoln, and his baby brother is, uh, and that's what he calls him, uh, is Prasanna, uh, T. Pras T. Vijay Prasanna Kumar. <clears throat> Both of these men, Abe Lincoln and, uh, and Prasanna, uh, I have worked with them, and uh, I have, uh, they have translated for me. Abe translated a, a, a book of uh, sermons that I wrote for preachers over there. And uh, Prasanna has recently translated one of my tracts, and we'll be doing more of that. Uh, they are gospel preachers. The other man there, Jeremiah, is Samson's oldest, I think the oldest, uh, brother-in-law. These three brothers have seven sisters. So it's a big family. And Samson led every one of them to Christ. He was the first in the family to obey the gospel. He led his, his parents and uh, all of his siblings. Uh, to Christ. And he sent us this gospel message. So <clears throat> from here, this again is Samson's preaching, and I'm just relaying that to you uh, for him and for the Lord. In Genesis chapter 4 and verse number 9, the Lord said to Cain, where's your brother Abel? And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Samson suggests, and he's right, we need to understand the Lord might ask us questions like that someday. 
Where are the people you're supposed to be responsible for? You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 and 11, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it's good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we're made manifest unto God, and I trust are made manifest also in your consciences. Do we know the terror of the Lord? Are we aware of it? Do we persuade men? Are we concerned for spreading the name of our God and His Son, Jesus Christ, around the world? We must all remember that God wants every soul to be saved. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises. Some men count slackness. But His long-suffering to us, we're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, 2 Peter 3 and verse number 9. And in Luke chapter 10, you remember verses 25 through 37, that story of the Good Samaritan, when the uh, priest came by and walked on the other side and wouldn't pay attention at all, and the Levite came by, and he went closer and took a look, but he went on by without doing any help. And then the Samaritan came and took him up and, and uh, cared for him. You know, sometimes we all act like that priest. Sometimes we act like that Levite. Sometimes we show no interest at all, sometimes a little bit of interest, but what do we do about it? God's going to ask us, just like He asked Cain, where's your brother? Why didn't you help when you could have helped? In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus said, What profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Our Lord wants us to remember that every one of us might be in danger of being lost eternally. Fear not them, He said, which kill the body but aren't able to kill the soul, but rather fear Him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. We need our brothers and sisters everywhere in the world to care for every person. We need generally to love one another because that's what Christians do. We must recognize and understand the greatest privilege on earth is to be a part of the kingdom of God. I'm persuaded that most Christians in America today have lost sight of the fact, at least don't spend much time thinking about the significance of being a child of God, in the household of God, in the kingdom of God. To us, our brother Peter wrote in 1 Peter chapter 2, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations, how to reserve the unjust to the day of judgment to be punished, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. God knows. He's watching. He's paying attention. And He knows what to do about it. How do you come into the kingdom of God? It's... <laughs> All we have to do is, is recognize, you know, God created all of this. He put us here for a purpose, to, to fear God and to keep His commandments. And He sent Jesus Christ to pay the price for us because we're weak and wobbly and don't follow Him all the time and we couldn't save ourselves. So Jesus paid the price. As we sang earlier on that old rugged cross, shedding His blood so that we might have opportunity to know a hope of eternal life in heaven. To turn away from our sins, to confess our faith in Him, and to be baptized into Him so that we could rise from baptism to walk in newness of life. Life gets so tedious and boring and troublesome at times, sometimes we just want to get out of it. But God will give us a new life in Jesus Christ. And Jeremiah the prophet said, The mercies of God are new every morning. If we continue to remember who we are and give ourselves to His service. Wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 and 29. The Apostle Paul said, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due, re due season we shall reap if we faint not. Have you been weary? Have you fainted away just a little bit from faithful service? God will forgive you if you come back